Hi, I'm Anders. Hey, I'm Kyle. I'm Bobby. We're Attica Riots. Check out our new album, Love Sunshine Hysteria, coming out in June. And you're watching Ambi. Hey guys, it's Alicia from your favorite site, Ambi, and I'd like to welcome you to our interview with Attica Riots. Hello. Hello. Hi, hey, thanks for having us. How are y'all doing today? Today's a good day. It's a good you? day. Yeah. Well, it's a good day here at Ambi, because we're very glad to be sitting down with you. So thanks for taking the time. You're welcome, absolutely. So I want to kick things off by saying it's a pretty exciting year for you because you're finally going to be dropping a debut album this summer. Just tell us a little bit about where you're at with it right now. Um, well, basically, we've spent the last couple years putting together a lineup, putting together the songs, putting together the recordings, and um, we've kind of put a team together, and this is the year that we finally, yeah, we get to just start unleashing it on the world and see what everyone thinks. Just tell us a little bit about creating it. Have you had any studio goofs together? What's that kind of been like being together working together on this? I, it's, a, it's such a funny thing. It, like, it comes in, in stages. Like, when, we, when we first met, when we st first started writing together, we were kind of, I was showing them my songs and they were showing me their songs. And then it just evolved from there. And now we're just rewrite together as, as just a, as a unit. And that's basically how it's been. And then in the studio, that's, these guys are the magicians in the studio. I write words and then they, they tell me what, when to sing, basically. They make it come to life, yeah. I guess. Mm -hmm. Well, you recently broke out the VCR for your lyric video for Simply Not Good Enough, and it just brought back instant nostalgia for me, because I remember just watching VHS when I was little. All the movies I watched were on that when yeah. I was a kid. Is that kind of the same thing for you? You know, we like making our own uh, lyric videos and little videos for YouTube and everything, and that was just another one of them. And I actually got the idea from digging through um, some home movies. Okay. Like, I, I got this little box that you could connect the VCR into my laptop, and I just went from there. I thought it'd be a good idea to do a little you know, lyric video with little cheesy texts and fonts and, you know, that 80s retro style. Yeah. And did you used to watch any actual movies on VHS growing oh, up? Oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah? What are, some, what are some you yeah. really remember? <laughs> yeah, that's the only way we watch them. Yeah. Take $3 to the go rent a movie. It's yeah. perfect. What are some you really remember watching? I was going to say Land Before Time, Transformers, Movie, um... I honestly watched Land Before Time like a week and a half ago. <laughs> 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 on VHS, though. So. It's, it's on Show Me. It's not the so same. Can I it's not promote Show Me? I'm not sure if I can. <laughs> we'll bleep it out. You'll, they'll think you're, yeah. you're swearing, you know? It's better. Wait, um. you've also shared your songs, No Hands, and your single, Misery. There's some super clever lyrics. Some of them are a little bit self-deprecating, but I was wondering, a song like Misery, is it about someone knowing that they can't necessarily find happiness and kind of just being content with that? Tell me about that a little. It's, it's definitely tongue-in-cheek. Uh, none of us really walk around miserable people, but I, th I think something that, that we all really get a kick out of and it just comes naturally is to to put uh, like kind of juxtapose the lyrics where, where it's really happy music to some kind of dark or uh, kind of just off-center lyrics a little bit so I, I love seeing people dance and sing just the most heinous things <laughs> so. and they, they can't they can't really tell that they're doing it <laughs> no it's like it's a fun thing like for people to be <laughs> getting behind and being happy about just it's just misery it's like it's it's, it's just something that everyone's going to feel naturally anyway, so I don't think we really r shy away from kind of touching base with it. Yeah. Well, just tell us a couple of things that don't bring you misery. When you do have some downtime, what do you enjoy doing? What do you like doing for fun? Well, we work on music a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, do we have hobbies? <laughs> do we have other hobbies besides music? Everything else has gone to the wayside. I recently fixed my pedal bike up, and that still hasn't even, still winter where we are, yeah. so... Yeah, most of my downtime is spent making music, like just at home on my computer and whatnot. It's so hard Sampling to escape liquor. something, especially when something that you love so much <laughs> or as a hobby turns into something you do full time. Yeah. It's like there's there's no way to get out of it. Yeah. yeah, usually it's like sweet, I have some free time to work on music. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, and you're you're making videos all the time. And like yeah, yeah. It's, we, I write like away from songs, so everyone's yeah. You know, people are always doing something based on that right now. I think it's kind of that time of the year for us to just be focused on that. And then in May, you're actually going to be hitting the road with two bands we absolutely love, Rooney and Mainland. Yeah. And you're going to be playing some new tunes on that tour. Is there any in specific that you look forward to sharing or performing the most? My favorite is No Hands. Yeah, I'm just looking forward to playing these songs for a new crowd in, a, in the States. Like, it'll be our first kind of trip down there and just kind of gauge or the reaction we're getting from playing the songs on our record that's coming out. So it's going to be really exciting. I, I, think, like, I think all of these songs are, are relatively new to... Um, uh, 
to the people that we're going to be going to show them to. We've done we've done a lot of work where we're from, which is you know Winnipeg. So we've played to so many people and d done so many shows over the years there. Uh, so now it feels like it's time to um, test the waters elsewhere. So that's basically we're just all excited to be put on a stage in front of people. But for the three of you, what were some of your first concert experiences? Do you kind of feel like that impacted your music at all? I wouldn't say it impacted my music. It certainly impacted my love for music. But um, I saw Kitty and Disturbed. <laughs> 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 and I, was, I, I distinctly remember wondering why the opening band was so much better than the closing band. And I won't tell you which one opened. For okay. uh, I was going to say Fred Penner, but <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <So> that's <laughs> probably my first concert. But I remember going to see the Rolling Stones in Winnipeg when I was like, like 12 years old nice. with my dad and I thought that was pretty mind-boggling so that was pretty influential and then just like seeing like all the Edge Fest shows and stuff like getting to see Green Day when they were like back in their blue hair days and I was like once again 12 years old that was pretty amazing <laughs> Kool-Aid running down your face Totally. <laughs> 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 uh, you know another thing is um, I, I really I really started focusing on music when I was starting to make music and so getting involved in the in the Winnipeg music scene getting involved in the local music scene was huge for me uh, because I got to see these guys when we like when we first met each other we were all in different bands yeah. in, in and around the city so just really gaining influence from the people that are f in your community there's somebody better than you at you know at the guitar at the drums at singing and at the lyrics so you just gotta keep your eyes open and keep getting better I guess you know if you could take the band to perform anywhere where would that one place be that you would just love to see people either singing your music back to you or actually being able to play to them? Gotham City. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. What are you guys laughing at? I'd love to eventually like play somewhere like Glastonbury or yeah. one of those huge UK festivals. Yeah, so those look so amazing. Like such. Oh, a yeah, there too. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and how about yourself? Yeah, some of those big European festivals that we grew up watching. Like I remember being a kid and just watching Blur and stuff on Much Music and just all the flags waving and... You know, something like that would obviously be amazing. I own those videos. Yeah. Like, that was such a big impact on, like, doing this today. So it's yeah. really cool you bring that up. Yeah. Awesome. Just to wrap things up today, anything you want to say to your fans who are going to be viewing the interview? I can't wait to come and meet you guys. I can't wait to play for you. I can't wait to um, just be involved. Just, just crash on your couch. <laughs> <laughs> Bum 20 bucks. We're a little hungry, so, you know, got some food in the fridge. Uh, but we're charming, so you'll enjoy giving us stuff. <laughs> Very charming. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. It's Thanks my pleasure. Thank you. And remember Appreciate to everybody viewing, visit us at amusicblogia.com for all exclusive interviews, features, videos, and so much more with your favorite bands. We'll see you next time.